This is your Midweek Barbie List Today News Update for Wednesday, March 16. A series of viral videos showing secondary students vaping and dancing inappropriately circulating on social media caused quite a stir today. Chief Education Officer Dr. Ramona Archer Bradshaw expressed her disappointment at the development, but assured that the principals of the respective schools are on top of the situation. As we know, the school is a microcosm of society. And some of the things that you see happening in society, you will see happening within our schools. I am confident that I have principals who will deal with the matters that arise and who will deal with the matters that arise in an effective way. We know that the students have been off for a number of years, two years. They've been using TikTok because it seems to be some kind of TikTok um, app that is being used. It seems to be some sort of TikTok challenge. I would encourage all parents, all teachers, all principals to continue to play their part in trying to mold our students. And I hope that my students, that our students can hear me um, this, this morning or, or today. I would encourage them, I would challenge them. You know, there's a TikTok um, song, it says, uh, you want to bamba if you want to G with the, chill with the big boys. If you want to do that, showcase positive things. Meanwhile, Archer Bradshaw is satisfied with the conduct of face-to-face -face classes which resumed on February 21, while touring Elliott Belgrave Primary School and Corridge and Parry School that underwent major renovations, she told reporters there have been no major hiccups. I'm very satisfied with the way that things are progressing since we reopened schools. I must commend all of the principals and the teams for the work that they have done in getting our students back to school. I've been to a number of school, schools and I've realized that the children are following the protocols generally. They're wearing their masks, they're physically distanced and they're using the sanitizer, you know, provided by the sa sanitizing stations that are there. Um, as you would have seen in the, in the newspapers recently, uh, every nursery, primary school and special needs school has hand sanitizing stations within the classroom and that is to facilitate the kind of cleanliness that we need in this particular environment. I must say also that we had meetings with our stakeholders, with the unions, uh, we had meetings with the principals associations and with principals as well to discuss how things have been going. In other news this Wednesday, the Democratic Labour Party wants the government to tell Barbadians when they will see a reduction in their electricity bills. Delivering an hour-long response to the national budget last evening, the party's third vice president, Ryan Walters, lauded the Mia Motley administration for its well-thought-out plan for the renewable energy sector. But he said with all the investments in renewable energy, consumers really wanted to know when they will pay less for electricity. It is my understanding that about 9% of the island's electricity is being supplied from solar PV systems at a fixed price. What does that mean? That means that only 9% of the electricity at the light and power is exempt from that variable cost of fluctuation of prices and inflation of oil on the international market. That is a far away from where we want to be. So I'm saying to the government of Barbados that given the aggressive targets of 50,000 rooftops with solar panels over the next five years, given the significant investment that we are seeing in renewable energies, we should, you should be identifying clear goals to the people of Barbados on where we should be year after year year after year, so that we get to understand what we can expect from a light and power company when we open our bills. Walters also took issue with government's plan to cap freight costs intended to shield customers from rising prices for goods. The private sector has welcomed the move but cautioned Tuesday that prices may not drop as increases on the cost of imported items continues to rise. Walters charged that government has given businesses the power to control the cost of food yet again. They will use their discretion now to determine if they pass on, when they pass on, how much they pass on. It is as simple as that. Nowhere in the presentation by the Minister of Finance and the Prime Minister did she try to convince us that we will get any benefit.
publishing price controls every two weeks so that we know who has the more reasonable prices doesn't help us. We want to know that the prices are coming downwards or stabilizing because there is some level of responsibility and integrity at the corporate level that are passing down the savings through the policies of the government to you, the consumers, and the patrons of their businesses. The government needs to stop playing this cat and mouse game and tell the people of the country what they will put in place as a measure to ensure that this particular policy, the savings or the stability and the increase in price comes down to the consumer so that it is felt where it is supposed to be felt. Now to the latest COVID-19 update, there were 118 new cases of the virus, 58 males and 60 females recorded on Tuesday from the 949 tests conducted by the Bessel Santos Public Health Laboratory. The cases comprised 26 persons under the age of 18 and 92 who were 18 years and older. The number of people in isolation facilities was 45, while 1,085 were in home isolation. The death toll from the virus stands at 300. And 26. There's regional and international news after this short break. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Moby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel, and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. More oxygen means more energy means more adventure. Pure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Pure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. To regional happenings, 1,000 new body cameras will be deployed to the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service. National Security Minister Fitzgerald Hines says the new body cameras adds to the 160 functional body cameras that are currently in use. We get more in this report from TTT News. He hopes that the new devices would be deployed to assist in the police services operations. The police now has 1,160 body cameras, and these have and are being deployed to maximum strategic effort across the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service in the fight against crime and in the spirit of transparency and all the other positives that such cameras would offer. Minister Hines believes body cameras will soon be a routine part of policing, noting that more units are being considered to be deployed in the TTPS but could not give a quantity or timeline. On the international front, in the United States, the Federal Reserve raised interest rates by a quarter of a percentage point on Wednesday as the Reserve Director laid out an aggressive plan to push borrowing costs to restrictive levels a year end. We get the details from Reuters TV. Fed Chair Jerome Powell told reporters that concerns over high inflation and the war in Ukraine will have implications on the U.S. economy. At the Federal Reserve, we are strongly committed to achieving the monetary policy goals that Congress has given us, maximum employment and price stability. Today, in support of these goals, the FOMC raised its policy interest rate by one quarter percentage point. The economy is very strong, and against the backdrop of an extremely tight labor market and high inflation, the committee anticipates that ongoing increases in the target range for the federal funds rate will be appropriate. In addition, we expect to begin reducing the size of our balance sheet at a coming meeting. The Fed, in a surprise move, projected the equivalent of quarter percentage point rate increases at each of its six remaining policy meetings this year. Well, that's news, but for the very latest, you can visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Capital Media HD, 99.3 FM.